How long should I extend my experience with the carnivore diet to be able to lose the excess body fat that I have? It has nothing to do with the carnivore diet. If it's not working for you, the minute you realize, hey, this isn't working for me, you need to start looking for another option. Maybe instead of trying to go lion diet or super crazy, I'm joining the cult of the carnivore club and eat nothing but beef and eggs for the rest of your life. Maybe you do beef, eggs, cheese, a little bit of heavy cream, maybe some potatoes, sweet potatoes, maybe some Brussels sprouts. Maybe you throw something else in there to kind of add some variety and do whatever else you want. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com, sign up for updates. The book comes out in September. What's going on, everybody? It's Coach Bronson here, and we're going to talk about how we need to stop putting the carnivore diet in a box and trying to st stop forcing the carnivore diet into things and situations and scenarios that it doesn't belong. The carnivore diet is not a weight loss program. It is not about using a meat-only uh, nutrition protocol to improve your body composition. It is about reducing to the lowest common denominator of nutrient intake that provides the highest amount of benefit to the body. So it's about removing things that reduce the interference of how well our body can operate. When we eat processed foods, seed oils, many plants for many people, not everybody and not every plant, but many plants for many people, there are a negative impact to how our metabolic function performs. And when we take those things out, we perform better. One of the offshoots and the results of that better performance is less fat is stored, more fat is used, and you lose body fat. Partially because of improved metabolic function, partially because there's also a reduction in overall fuel intake, right? You're hungry less, you eat less, you can subsist off of less energy intake because your body is better at utilizing the energy it has. When you eat less, you will lose body fat. When you eat less fuel, you will lose body fat, okay? We're not gonna get into a calories in, calories out discussion here because that's not what this is about. This is about function and fuel. You improve your function, you use less fuel, you require less fuel, so you lose weight. You lose fat. That's kind of how this works, right? So I'm gonna read to you. I got a comment on one of my videos recently. Uh, allow me to ask a couple questions about the carnivore diet. Failure experience so far. I'm now over 120 days into strict carnivore. I eat only meat and eggs, four to 500 grams of cooked meat, plus seven to eight eggs a day, two meals a day. I'm 180 pounds, about 21% body fat. Go to the gym two to three times a week, lifting weights. And that's all it says, lifting weights. Doesn't talk about intensity program, anything like that. Uh, I started the carnivore diet to improve my body composition. That's the number one issue. That's, the, that's where this whole thing begins. You don't have to go carnivore to improve your body composition. It is a benefit. I didn't go carnivore to improve my body composition. I went carnivore to improve my IBS and urgent bowels. I found out later that it really worked well and it helped me improve my body composition, right? I lost a lot more fat and I got super lean. I improved my physical performance. I gained muscle. Okay? I'm at a point now where I've put some of that back. Right? I was down to 172 at one point in time when I first went carnivore. Okay, I haven't been that low. I was almost, uh, I think I got close to my high school graduating weight of 165 uh, a couple years ago. Almost 50 years old at six feet tall. I was skinny. I was skinny. I've got pictures of me look, looking at those pictures now. It's like, what was I doing? But I was, I was fixated on, on using this to get as lean as possible. Um, and it worked. I got super lean. Like I was lean, lean, like under 10%. Now at 52, I'll be 52 in a couple months, 52 years old. I'm running about 198 and I'm about 17, 18% body fat. I'm happy. I'm comfortable. 
I am functional and I feel like I can maintain this for the rest of my life. And that's where we want to be. Super lean can be great for a time, but you don't need to live there unless you want to. That's your call. Um, but it takes a lot of extra work. And we'll talk about that. Getting lean is more about what you're doing or not doing than it is about what you're eating. Okay. You can get super lean on IIFYM and eat Snickers all day. You're going to be unhealthy as crap, but you're going to, you're, you're going to change your body composition. Okay. So it's, it's less about what you're doing. And we'll talk about that in a second. So that's the first thing, understanding that carnivore is not about body composition. Body composition is a result that many people get from going carnivore. Okay. Um, I lost about 17 pounds in the first six weeks, mostly water. I would bet that that probably wasn't water. You may have lost some water in the first seven to 10 days, probably four to six pounds of water, maybe depending on what you were doing before. I'm not sure what your diet was before. Uh, you didn't lose 17 pounds of water. If you lost that much weight, most of it was probably fat. And you may have lost some muscle, but again, if you're weight training and you're getting enough protein, which it sounds like you're getting plenty of protein, uh, which you might be able to get more, uh, you probably lost most, mostly muscle there and water, some water, mostly, mostly, uh, sorry, muscle, mostly fat, not, not muscle. I said muscle water, mostly fat. Um, since I haven't been able to change my body comp composition, I've now gone more than six weeks without any body changes, nothing in body fat percentage measurements, um, in fact, I've gained two and a half pounds between weeks 10 and 13. However, it might just be water. Again, weight gain without just telling me if it's body fat or muscle, not really sure. Um, but two and a half pounds over a three week period, that could be inflammation, stress, water. There could be a bunch of different things. Uh, it could be fat as well. Who knows? Uh, he didn't, didn't specify. I still need to lose at least another 15 pounds of fat to reach my goal of being below 15%. Okay. However, I don't see the carnivore diet facilitating this process. I have not experienced the benefits common to carnivore, um, nor has it changed my body composition. Okay. Um, he's saying that he's already healthy and he didn't do this for any health issues, just for body composition. Question. How long should I extend my experience with carnivore to be able to lose excess body fat? What is the minimum time you should maintain a carnivore diet when it's not working? And is the carnivore diet effect for those who are already healthy, but just need to improve body composition? Those are good questions. All right. Let's, let's hit the first one. How long should I extend my experience with the carnivore diet to be able to lose the excess body fat that I have? It has nothing to do with the carnivore diet. There's four things. There's two things really when it comes to metabolic performance and body composition. It is intake or output. Some of you guys aren't going to want to hear this. Okay. It's not calories in calories out. And I want to make a distinction. We're not talking about calories because not all food has usable calories for fuel. Protein is mostly used for function. You need protein to improve how well your engine performs. You need fat and carbs to provide the fuel so that your engine does perform. So there's a difference. When I talk about fuel intake, input and output, what are you doing? to utilize fuel? What are you doing to increase your metabolic performance? And then what are you putting in? Okay. If you're, what you're putting in is causing interference, you're going to burn less fuel. If it's great and it's good for you, your body is going to use it and you're going to have access to whatever you need. Okay. If you're, if you put less in, then it will have to pull the rest from your body. Okay. And this is where we talk about finding your, your fuel macro threshold. Okay. If you can take in 150 grams of fat and carbs, let's say combine it. Okay. Let's say, let's say it's 150 is your, is your fuel gram threshold and 70 to 80 of that is fat and uh, 60 to 70 of that, right? 70 to 80 of that, I guess it's half and half, right? 70 and 80 of that would be carbs and you can stay there and you don't gain fat. Then you know, that's where you are to maintain if you need to lose fat, then you drop that total number down. So if it's 150, let's go to 140. You will lose some fat at 140 if 150 is your threshold, maintenance threshold. So you drop 10, you got 10 grams off. You're going to lose a bit of weight over time. Maybe you drop 20 grams off. Maybe you go from 150 to 130. And that's a good sustainable fat loss that over time you will see the, 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 the fat drop off your body. 
Okay. That is one way to go about it. Managing your fuel macro intake. Okay. The other way is, okay. Notice I didn't say managing your calories. It's not about everything that you eat, just your fuel. And I don't count protein and fuel. Okay. It general rule of thumb, don't count protein in your total fuel expenditure. Okay. Just count your fat and your carbs. And you never want to be below 70 grams of carbs or sorry, 70 grams of fat. Okay. I don't care if you're at zero carbs or 120 carbs, you need at least 70 grams of fat, maybe more. Everyone's different, but I like, I don't like to see anybody below 70, 75 grams of fat per day. Okay. I like to see my minimum that I try to keep everybody at to maintain the closest thing they can to consistently managing their health, hundred grams of fat. I think everybody should have that unless you're really trying to do something specific to, to cut your body fat low. 100 grams is where you really should be to be uh, functioning without any problems, okay? And that may be higher for some people. Just keep that in mind. The other aspect of body composition, again, has nothing to do with carnivore. What are you doing? You're working out two to three days a week. If you want to improve your body composition by building muscle and by burning fat through the activity that you do, which building muscle is the number one way to do it, okay? Because you only burn fat through exercise while you're exercising. If you build muscle, then you can burn more fat even when you're not exercising. That's the key there. All right. So you want to improve how the activity that you do is working towards your body composition goals, then increase the intensity, increase the frequency, increase the duration. Those are the three aspects of the physical activity that you're doing that you can utilize to increase how much your body composition changes. Okay. So it's fuel in, what am I taking in? Am I taking in more than my body needs? If I'm taking in more than my body needs, I'm not going to lose anything. If I take in less and my body has to pull what it needs from my body, then I'm going to lose weight off. I'm going to lose fat off my body. Okay. And the other was output. Am I doing enough physical activity that is strenuous and challenging enough on a consistent basis at an intensity and a duration that causes my body to change? Okay. Those are the two main aspects you can change. As far as the minimum time you should maintain a carnivore diet when it's not working for you, again, this isn't a carnivore question. How long should you maintain any activity, nutrition, fitness, habit, lifestyle, mindset, friends, relationships, work, if it's not working for you? The minute you decide that it's not working for you, you need to find something else. That's the answer. If it's not working for you, the minute you realize, hey, this isn't working for me, you need to start looking for another option. Okay. So if carnivore isn't your, your, your solution, what else could you do? Again, we have another, we can have another conversation about how do you find other things to do and what are the principles you need to look for in that next option. But if it's not working, you need to find something to change. Maybe there is a level within carnivore that can work. Maybe it's carnivore because remember hyper carnivore, you guys can love this hyper carnivores, 70% meat. You can eat 30% plants and still be carnivore. So maybe instead of trying to go lion diet or super crazy, I'm, uh, I'm joining the cult of the carnivore club and eat nothing but beef and eggs for the rest of your life. Maybe you do beef, eggs, cheese, a little bit of heavy cream, maybe some potatoes, sweet potatoes, maybe some Brussels sprouts. Maybe you throw something else in there to kind of add some variety and do whatever else you want, right? There's nothing saying you can't do any of those things and still see success especially if your goal is just body composition. Guys, body composition is the easiest thing for all of this stuff. If all you're worried about is body composition, you don't have to do keto. You don't have to do carnivore. You don't have to do paleo. You find whatever combinations of food are working for you without making your health get worse that allows you to manage your fuel macros and your functional macros in a way that is sustainable for you. That's it doesn't have to be carnivore. If you have health issues and you have reasons why outside of body composition, then the choices you have to make about your food impact your life negatively. That's a reason to start looking at some other options, carnivore, keto, things like that. Okay. Very different discussion when we're talking about just body composition versus other quality of life issues. And then is the carnivore diet effective for those who are already healthy and just need to improve body composition? It can be, 
but it's not because it's carnivore. Okay. So I hope that answers some questions, guys. Just remember, stop trying to force just because here, here's this one, just because you've put yourself in a box of what you're going to do for your nutrition doesn't mean that that box fits into what you're trying to make it do. Okay. You don't have to do anything outside of what's effective to help you get where you want to go. You don't. Okay. Do I think that you need certain things in order to survive? Absolutely. We need nutrition. We need nutrient density. We need satiety. We need bioavailability. There are thousands of different ways to get that. And there are thousands of different ways for each individual person to put those things together to make it work for them. All right. So stop living in this box and trying to put everything into a box and start asking yourself, what's the only thing that matters? The only thing that matters is what's working for you. All right, guys, you know, I am a fan of protein. You know that prioritizing protein is a key aspect to the fundamental concepts of nutrition. I highly recommend for those people who need the help in increasing the protein intake, Equip Foods Beef Isolate Protein Powder. They have a ton of different flavors, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, salted caramel, coffee flavor. It is the cleanest and most effective protein powder that I have ever used. 